All right, here, guys. I'm Tim Cow. Hope you can see me. I'm here to do the ice bucket challenge. Uh, well, so basically, I'm just gonna dump this uh, bucket of water over my head for awareness of ALS. Hold up. Wait, friend. Before we go ahead over here and do this ice bucket challenge, let's take a second to think about it. Let's see. We see. I see some troubling things with this ice bucket challenge. So let's take a moment and dissect it. Hi, I'm Jack Black, and a few uh, hours ago, my cousin Jason challenged me to the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. I accept your Jason, and um, <clears throat> as I understand it, I get to challenge Isle Gas, Cheech, and Chong. Taste it, suckers! <laughs> Go ahead. For the challenge. Accepted. Jamie Lynn Spears for nominating me for the ALS Challenge, and I want to nominate Adam Sandler, David Licato, and Robin Greenhill. Oh my god! Challenge of Beyonce. Nominate my boys, Mark Wahlberg, Chance Later. <laughs> Alright, Scooter, I accept your ice bucket challenge. Now I'm Kristen Leah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys are next. Okay, I'm ready. One, two. I accept the challenge from Brandon Williams, Kevin Durant, Kevin Hart, and DJ Obama. LLS Challenge. Sorry, Mom. Just do thing. Ah, oh, good! I swear, I swear it's bad. Total first mouse really funny. Okay, here we go. Accept your challenge! <laughs> Okay, you may be wondering after looking at the clips we just observed, what's so bad about raising awareness for a disease that is devastating so many lives? Well, not to be judgmental, because at first I kind of was like, well, you know, this is great. And then I started seeing people as big as Bill Gates and Oprah Winfrey and Mark Zuckerberg, the creator of Facebook. And a lot of these people that are getting involved are very high-ranking Masons. I mean, you could do research on it. Uh, they're Masons. They don't really care about the health of the general public. They, re they are really more for um, depopulation through vaccines, through technological finds that's what they're more about so why would they be so much well why would they pay so much attention to this uh, disease it's definitely not the most uh, deadliest disease now the founder of this project and I've forgotten his name but and I'm kinda sorry about that because he recently he was actually just killed in some kind of freak car accident and I, I won't go all into conspiracy theory. But, remnant people of God, my problem came in. Really, when it really got my attention, I've seen people do it, but there are all kinds of new trends going on now. There's one with Kermit the Frog saying all kinds of obscene things and people using the picture. So, you know, I tend to just say, hey, that's the world doing what the world does. But my problem lies in when I see the remnant people of God and pastors of the church and presidents of the conferences doing uh, these ice bucket challenges that's where my problem comes in at. so that's when I said uh, you know it's getting to be a bit much and you know this is a real hard video actually for me to speak out on because God used Doug Bachelor in Amazing Facts, being that he's one of the people that um, that did accept the Ice Bucket Challenge, one of the pastors, uh, to reach out uh, is actually how I became, uh, I discovered my faith, you know. I was watching those Amazing Facts videos and they just, they do some great work. 
And I want to think in defense of Pastor Doug and Elder Ted Wilson um, and any others that I am not thinking of at this moment or haven't seen yet, that maybe they're doing this thing, hey, maybe this is a good cause. But I can't put my personal feelings above what God has revealed to us in Scripture. And the first verse that came to my mind was Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. Can two walk together except they be in agreement? And so this just started to make me think, um, maybe you need to do some research on this ice bucket challenge. And as I began to do research, I started to find out, hey, um, also, first of all, the person that confirmed what I thought that I need to do some research is actually one of my good Facebook friends. And they were posting um, that the Ice Bucket Challenge uh, originated as a form of satanic worship. It's one of the things they do in their services, um, I believe, with the sacrifice of infants. So it's more of a satanic baptism. So when he said this, I began to do research. And I couldn't find just reliable enough sources to say that it's exactly a satanic baptism. Um, I'm still searching, but I want to get this to you quickly as possible. But I can tell you, <laughs> I can tell you that the devil does love to counterfeit the true things of God. When Aaron and the uh, when Aaron threw that cast down his rod and made a living serpent, the devil cast down uh, had his agencies, those sorcerer, sorcerers and ma magicians, to cast down cast down rather their rods and they appeared to be serpents. And why I say that they appeared to be serpents is because we know that the devil cannot create life. So, God has true baptism that takes you from your old self and death and burial and dying to your old self until you rise up out of the water and you're a new creature. And we know in Catholicism that they believe in christening babies and they, and they pour the little cup of water over the head of the baby and they believe they don't uh, they're not so much into 100% immersion which is actually the definition of baptism so the thing is people of God does this kind of look like a Catholic ba baptism to you and if it does look like something that comes from a form of Catholicism have we forgot which role they play in Bible prophecy and so here's the thing. That was enough enough points that I could put together to actually say, okay, yeah, there's there's truth behind it. It's, it, it, it appears an like ex-Satanist has came out and said that it was a part of one of their ceremonial services, the dumping of the water. It has something to do with sacrifice. So here's the thing. We just watched the world do it. Um... I didn't get the videos of the, the Seventh-day Adventist preachers doing it. But here's the thing, Remnant Church. Can two walk together except they be in agreement? So I want to read this um, statement for you. Here from uh, the Last Day Events. Um, it's a great book. If you ever read it, I would recommend it. And the, the subtitle is Miracles Will Be Performed. It says the sick will be healed before us. Miracles will be performed in our sight. Are we prepared for the trial which awaits us when the lying wonders of Satan shall be more fully exhibited? Uh, exhibited I'm sorry. Men under the influence of spirits will work miracles. They will make people sick by casting their spells upon them and then remove the spell leading others to say that those who were sick have been miraculously healed. This Satan has done again and again wonderful scenes which Satan will closely connect will soon take place. God's word declares that Satan will work miracles. He will make people sick and then will suddenly remove them from his satanic power, they will then be released 
regarded rather as healed. And that's last day of Vince chapter 11. Okay. So, not saying that's what this uh, Lou Gehrig's disease is. Well, no, disease don't come from God. Unless it's in, in a form of play. There will be a time where God takes his veil of protection off the earth and plagues do fall. But typically, disease and that come from sin, sin originated with the devil. So, let's say that, that a cure is found for this, um, for this Lou Gehrig's disease. And, you know, the, the people are doing the ice bucket challenge. They're getting great praise. You know, you guys really made a difference. You donated your money, blah, blah, blah. If this happens, watch how people begin to marvel. See, it's it, a time is coming where there's a big, uh, great shifting, a uh, sifting, rather, I'm sorry, as some people are being sifted in, some people are being sifted out. There are two revivals that are the stage is being set for now. There's a great, great, great revival that will take place for the one and true God. And then there's another another revival that will be a false revival that will be stemmed by miracles or out of fear or, or, or out of economic crisis that will take place. That's not the revival that you want to be a part of. So I'm sitting here and thinking, I'm like, well, I have to be honest. I even shared the video. Like I said, I, I, um, I don't want to say a fan. But uh, I can greatly appreciate the work that Amazing Facts does. So I'm praying and hoping that what happened with Pastor Doug, he might have just thought it was just a good cause and got involved. But um, I actually shared the video, and my good friend Ronnie, he was just, he was like sad face. Like, it's not such a good thing. I'm like, oh, Ronnie, you're being too tough. But. I can't forget, forget, forget what scripture and inspiration both tell us that, think about this verse, James 4 and verse 4, ye adulterers and adulteress, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. There's no way around that verse. There's no way you can push that out to the side. And remember, two can you know can two walk uh, walk together lest they be agreed. So, with that being said, I see the world walking in one way, and I see the church starting to walk with them is a shocking scene to me. I don't think we should regard it so lightly. I think we should reach out to our leaders and pastors. And say, hey, we need to get back and do the work that God has called us to do. Let the world have that. If we want to donate something to um, to a charity, it's not that we want to be difficult or kind of boxed in from the world. But we know, like I said, I've heard all kinds of things from multiple sources that this is used for embryo stem research. And that's not something we want to fellowship. Because when you co-sign something, you co-sign all the damage and and ruin that comes behind this project. So, I just challenge you guys, before you get involved in these challenges, and if you happen to see this, Pastor Doug, first of all, hi. And, but if you, you know, I was just challenging the, uh, you know, or, or Elder Ted Wilson, if you guys see this. Um, just do some research on these things. I know we all have a heart. We all want to get in and show that we're not so different from the world. You know, we're, we're not trying to be unattainable or untouchable. And, and, um, but we must, we must, 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 must stand firm on these foundations. We know what time it is, Seventh day Adventists and all Christians. I know you can look around and see what's going on outside and tell this time of this planet is winding down quickly. So, 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 I can't stress it enough. Do research before you get involved in these various viral challenges. Okay, one other uh, look uh, excerpt from uh, the book, uh, Review of Herald, December 4th, 1894, I want to read. It says, 
A Christian is described by the scriptures is a person who is separated from the world in his aims and practices and is united with Christ. A professor of the peace which Christ alone can bestow. Finding that the joy of the Lord is his strength and that his joy is full. Christians will not leave the world to perish unwarned and make no effort for the reclaiming of the loss. The truth of God sanctifies the believer. And he holds sweet communion with Christ. He puts to us every talent God has given him in the service of Christ in grateful love to him who gave his precious life for him. In order that he might not perish but have everlasting life. Those who truly love Christ become laborers together with God. And they watch for every opportunity to employ the means of their command in doing good. And in pattern after the works of Christ. They will not yield to temptations to make alliances with the world. They will not unite with secret orders. And bind themselves by intimacy with unbelievers. But those who are not wholly on the side of Christ, are at large degree controlled by the maxims and customs of the world. They unite in close companionship with the world and make partners of those who do not love God, but who rather dishonor Him. Alliance with the world on the part of those who profess to be Christians is pleasing to the enemy of all righteousness for it is favorable to his uh, determined purpose to build up his kingdom it is conductive to his success that many of his subjects put on a form of godliness and assume the appearance of the children of God by the means his power to deceive a and decoy soul to ruin is greatly increased. He exercises his wisdom and power through these unconverted agencies who still claim to be the followers of Christ. And wherever the classes of his subjects meet for the supposed purpose of worshiping God, Satan is there to suggest words and to exert his influence against the truth. Satan is rich in the world's goods and he is full of cunning and um, I'm sorry, cunning to deceive and his most effective agents are those whom he can lead to take a form of godliness while they deny the power of God by their unchrist like characters. Review and Herald, December 4th, 19, um, 1894. Okay, you guys, I just want to share that with you. Um, definitely hoping these these men, you know, um, you know, will see what I'm saying, at least take it into consideration. And if they find it to be fellowship with the world, that they would come to Jesus. And that they would repent, you know, um, you know, and for our pastors and leaders, uh, the same, you know, you, you we we have to stand firm. It's that's that's all there is to it. We have to stand firm right now. I'm Tim Cows from According to His Will Ministry. This video needs to be shared. If you don't share it, and there's not another video in its place for the remnant people of God then you're sinning, friend. It needs to be shared. We need to raise awareness of satanic deceit. Like this video. Share it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video for more. God bless you and have a good day.